church and welcome to our Christmas Day service. What a year this has been. We've run out of loo rolls, <laughs> we've gone mad in the shops, and bulking up on different items, we've been in lockdown several times, we've lost a few loved ones along the way as well, um, and we've had to be on our own, and it's all been a weird year for 2020. Um, but we give thanks that God has remained the same. God has remained um, our saviour. And today we celebrate the birth of our saviour, Jesus Christ, on this special Christmas day. Um, for those who can't be with their families today, uh, we are with you. And the Prince of Peace, the love of God is with you. And um, as we celebrate this service this morning, I just want you to take time to remember those who can't be uh, with their loved ones this morning, who have, who have lost a loved one. But we just pray for you as well that we pray the peace of god would be with you through this day and whatever you're facing that god would just be with you right now that oh sorry someone wants to get down um yeah that god would just really be with you and um, his love would just shine upon you and i pray protection around each and every one of you who's watching this morning and this is, if this is your first time watching this morning then you are very welcome and we want you just to feel blessed and may the love of god just shine upon you as well so please do enjoy our Christmas Day service, sing along with our carols, and we've got a great word from our new pastor. Oh, it's just going to be awesome. So yeah, so stay with us, and um, Merry Christmas, and enjoy the rest of the service. God bless you. Today on Christmas Day, we celebrate the gift of us to the birth of Jesus, and recall we have hope we have in Christ. We light again the candles of hope, peace, love, and joy. We pray. Holy God, you left the glory of heaven to take upon yourself our fragile humanity. You came to us in love, and yet we denied your room, and you were laid in a manger. We have lit candles of hope, peace, love, and joy. May these virtues shine brightly in our lives as we welcome you into our hearts this Christmas. Amen. An official shepherd, Dave, was a guarding of the sheep, which were allocated to his care and watchfulness to keep, by an over-shepherd, who himself a careful watch would keep, over Dave and all the other shepherds outside with the sheep, which numbered many hundreds and included numerous goats, and most of them were fat of tail, with thick warm woolly coats. It came upon a midnight clear. An angel, very large and near, filled them with dread and deep alarm, impending doom and permanent harm of instant death. But just before they took what they imagined was their final breath, the angel spake. Good news, great joy, the Christ is born, a baby boy. Then suddenly a whole crowd of them appeared and were joyfully singing, Peace on earth, good will to men, and then away they were winging. To Bethlehem Dave and the shepherds did go to see this special thing, and there in a crib in a swaddling cloth was the newborn baby king. Joyfully back to the flock they went, back for their watch to keep, praising God for his good news to man. Anything for us, said a sheep.
It begins in Bethlehem, a nativity rhyme for Christmas time. A woman called Mary was doing her chores when an angel arrived, but not through the doors. He simply appeared, and she dropped to the floor. Hello, Mary, he said. God is with you. God is with me, she wondered. But what does that mean? What's this all about? Is it some kind of dream? The angel just smiled. Don't be scared. 
please don't scream. God is happy with you and will bless you. God knocks down the proud and lifts up the meek and does mighty things for those who are weak and blesses the ones whose service he seeks. So sing out his praise. He's amazing. You'll soon have a baby, the angel went on, a quite special baby called Jesus, God's son. The heir of King David, he'll sit on his throne and his kingdom will last forever. But how, Mary asked, I don't understand. I'm engaged to be wed, but he's not yet my man. Trust God, said the angel. He's got it all planned. His spirit will come upon you. All night Joseph tossed, all night Joseph turned. He just couldn't sleep. He'd only just learned that Mary was pregnant. What's more, she'd confirmed that the baby she bore was not his. Joseph, don't worry. Joseph, don't weep. Lay down your head and go back to sleep. Mary's been faithful. Her love's strong and deep. And her baby is God's own son. He's the answer to all that the prophets have said. So keep your engagement. Be glad and be wed. And when Joseph woke up, that's just what he did. He took Mary to be his wife. One hump, two humps. The star watchers watched the stars go by, looking for secrets in the sky. And then they saw a special star away in the west, away off far. A king's been born, that's what it means, Judea way, or so it seems. They climbed aboard their camely beasts and set off west from their homes back east. One hump, two humps, lumpity lump. The star watchers went with a bump and a thump. One hump, two humps, lumpity lump. The star watchers followed the star. At last their journey came to an end. They parked their camels in Jerusalem. Then they went to Herod, king of the nation, to ask him for some information. O oh, king, they asked. They were quite polite. Somewhere around here on this starry night, a brand new baby king abides. Can you tell us where this child resides? Star Watch's friends, King Herod smiled. In Bethlehem you'll find the child. Would you tell me where you find him, please? The exact address would put my mind at ease. Herod, of course, told them a lie. He'd already planned for the child to die. When he found the boy, that's what he'd do. So the Star Watchers left without a clue. The shining star led them to the place, a simple house, not some fancy space. And when they saw the little boy, they gave him a pile of special toys. Presents, rather, fit for a king. A bunch of shiny golden things, a spice called myrrh, a sort of perfume, while smelling frankincense filled the room. Then in the night, they had a dream that showed them Herod's evil scheme. So they never said where the boy's house lay, but went straight home by another way. One hump, two humps, lumpity lump. The Star Watchers went with a bump and a thump. One hump, two humps, lumpity lump. The Star Watchers followed the star. So what is the point of angels and shepherds and camels and stars, you say? Is it just a nice story to tell the children to celebrate Christmas Day? It's not just a story. It's not just for kids. It's the hinge on which history swings. That Bethlehem baby grew into a man who challenged all powers and kings. He taught us that love is better than hate that serving beats being in charge. He showed us the value of each human life, the little as well as the large. And then on a cross, he died for us all, died to take all our wrongs away, and walked three days later right out of his tomb to turn death's dark night to day. And that is the good news the angels proclaimed, the heart of all Jesus would do, a new life for now, a new life forever. That's his Christmas present to you. The book of John starts like this. In the beginning, the word already existed. The word was with God and the word was God. From the very beginning, the word was God. Through him, God made all things. Not one thing in all of creation was made without him. The word was the source of life and this life brought light to humanity. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness has never put it out. Merry Christmas, Mitcham Lane Baptist Church. This year has been odd, hasn't it? 
and I'm sure your Christmas day doesn't quite look like your normal Christmas days, just as mine doesn't. And yet we can gather whilst we're scattered in all of these different ways. And I'm thrilled that you've asked me to share this Christmas message with you. And I look forward to next Christmas, where I hope and pray we can be together in person and we can worship and celebrate the birth of Jesus. But for today, as strange as this day may be, with all the plans that you've laid aside, let's just take a few minutes to reflect on this story once again. See, I love that passage that starts off John. There's a couple of things that you probably should really know about me, and one is that I love Christmas. But this passage in particular speaks to my heart in a way like the others don't. My spine goes a bit tingly and the hairs on the back of my neck go up when I hear it read out loud in church, often by a small child with a cute voice, so that probably has something to add to the mix. But it's that reminder that right at the beginning of the creation of the world, Jesus was with God. And see, at Advent and Christmas, we often think about darkness and light, and those passages that are very familiar to us speak of the people walking in darkness and how the birth of Jesus gives them a great light. And whilst all that's true, this year, this year that's been so different, so difficult, so unexpected, unprecedented, as they keep saying, I've been reflecting a lot on darkness. See, there's also some verses that give a slightly different view. In Isaiah chapter 45, verse three, it says this. I will give you the treasures of darkness and riches hidden in secret places so that you may know that it is I, the Lord, the God of Israel, who calls you by your name. These verses got me thinking. See, when I was a child, I knew it was time to go in when it got dark. And as a young woman growing up, I knew that I wasn't to walk home on my own in the dark, which meant that many of my guy friends when I was in senior school would have a double or treble length journey to walk me home safely before they went to their house. It seems like it's inbuilt in some of us, the stories and the patterns that darkness is bad and yet this passage in Isaiah says that there are treasures, that there are riches in it for us, that God has for us. And so as we think about the nativity scene, the story, the scriptures and how it all gets outplayed, I'd like us to just think about the darkness. See, we always think about the light and Jesus being the light of the world. And please don't get me wrong, that's great. I'm a real big fan of Jesus. That's another thing to know about me. But it seems to me like God is at work in much of the darkness. See, when I think about it, lots of it starts to add up. There's Mary, and so in the darkness of her womb, protected and sheltered, nurtured, nourished and fed, grows Jesus. And then when we think about Joseph, he's ready to go. I mean, it's understandable, right? The scandal of Mary being pregnant and it not being his is more than scandal. She could get stoned and killed. I mean, that's pretty dark. But it's while he's dreaming in the darkness of night that he has a message. It's in the darkness and in the dream that God chooses to speak. And so Mary and Joseph continue on their journey. But the darkness creeps up every now and then through the rest of the story. The shepherds are out at night. Shepherds who are accustomed to darkness, who are used to seeing the stars and navigating the fields, looking after the sheep by moonlight, are visited. You've had a visit, haven't you, Mitchum Lane, by a fabulous angel. So you know what it's like. There's the blinding light that comes when the angel comes. Now, you can only have blinding light if you're in darkness. You can't have it if you're in blinding sunshine. 
So they're there in the dark and the blinding light comes. The message is given and they're told to go. They want to go and find the good news and they could, they could wait till the morning. But the scriptures tell us that they set off in the night. Shepherd Olivia reminded us that we had to shield our eyes from the light. I wonder how long it took for their eyes to adjust before they could move on. And then of course, the darkness continues even more because the Magi, now they navigate the whole journey using the stars. In fact, for me, it's been one of the gifts of lockdown in this year See, I live on a flight path, so there's usually not many stars and there's usually quite a bit of pollution in the sky. And, well, April, May, June, when the darkness came at night, we could see the stars in a whole new way. It was quite magical, mysterious and a gift. I guess that's the sense that the Magi had too. God, the creator of the universe, places stars in the sky. We can only see the stars when it's dark. And then we come to the stable that probably didn't look very much like this or our modern interpretations of a stable and definitely did not have electric lighting like some of our sheds. It seemed more likely it was like a cave a cave that held darkness within it by its very nature. But it protected, it nurtured, it gave shelter to Jesus, Mary and Joseph and their visitors. It acted like the womb. And the story unfolds. The light is born, the shepherds come, the magi come. There's much celebration and yet the difficulties don't stop. Mary and Joseph and baby Jesus have to flee. Many of us will have seen this year lots of people fleeing their homes, taking their children and heading into the unknown, seeking safety and sanctuary. Mary and Joseph, baby Jesus, they knew what it was to flee. The darkness continued. And yet, when we read that bit of scripture from John, we're reminded about the beginning of the story. Jesus was with God at the beginning. I mean, picture the scene, you've got God, Jesus and the Holy Spirit and they're hanging out. And the beginning of Genesis tells us that there is nothing. It's dark, dark, dark. And the first thing they do is create light to go with the dark. Not as opposites or enemies, but to complement each other. Like I said, you can't see the stars without there being darkness. And so the story through scripture continues. It starts with some darkness and some light. The birth of Jesus holds within it much darkness and light. And then of course, we have the gift of hindsight to know that as the story of Jesus continues, we see Jesus going through the darkest time anyone could go through, being placed once again in a cave, a tomb that holds safety and sanctuary, and we see him walk out. Friends, the good news of Jesus is in the birth of a baby who comes to show us a way to live that isn't just in the light, but also in the darkness too. I've been thinking about these treasures in the darkness and I wonder what they've held for you this year. There's been a few different things for me. The gift of people getting involved, helping each other, neighbours that I've met that I didn't know before. The solidarity that people have shown. The thankfulness that many have given the wonder and the awe, the night sky, and the reminder to the church that buildings will come and buildings will go, but we, the people of God, 
have seen a great light that's good news for all and we've continued to worship. So I pray that today, whatever it looks like for you, whether there's lots of lights or none, that you may know that the God of love is with you, that Jesus the Redeemer is with you and that the Holy Spirit dwells with you and amongst you on this very special day. And friends, I look forward to Easter when we can be together, when we can do a journey together again that sees us back in a place of safety and sanctuary and Jesus in a tomb, knowing that there's much good news, not just for today, but for all the days to come. Have a great Christmas and we'll see you soon. Bye.
for 2020 and what a year it's been. Let's just take a moment, shall we, to remember all those who perhaps are on their own today uh, due to the pandemic or because they've lost somebody. It's been a really tough year. But we want to say thank you to all those who have contributed in the last nine months to our online services. We had a top viewing figure of 244, which is amazing. So thank you so much to everybody who's taken part. We really couldn't have done it without you. Uh, we won't be having a service here on Sunday the 27th or the 3rd of January, but we will be back for an online communion service on the 10th of January. So that's it. And I just wish you a happy Christmas and see you in 2021. Bye-bye.